No, he used to shove it. Man! Shove it, squad. The WWF Hardcore division is remembered fondly by Attitude Era fans as a time when hardcore wrestling first came into the mainstream. The matches were fun, there were moments that you all remember, and it gave some wrestlers a purpose who might otherwise have been a bit lost in the shuffle. But we're not here to talk about that. This isn't an episode of What a Twatterholic. Today's video was a YouTube suggestion from Joey Gillian. Sometimes you've got to listen to the squad. The WWF Hardcore division was so successful that WCW decided they would copy the idea of the division. They even had their own belt. But unlike the WWF Hardcore division, nobody really talks about it. Other than that terrible video game Backstage Assault. Less said about that one, the better. But who were the wrestlers involved? Were there any good matches or moments? We're going to find out all of that today. Because today, it's the WCW Hardcore division. Was it any good? But then, I watched the first few matches and found out straight away, it was terrible. It's not even up for debate. So instead, just enjoy me tearing this terrible title to pieces. By 1999, we'd seen a few hardcore matches in WCW, and with lots of former ECW wrestlers in the company at the time, this wasn't surprising. But we're looking for the start of the actual hardcore division. So it all started with Hardcore Hack who gives the ladies a smack. The Sandman was tired of WCW refusing to sanction his matches, so he asked for all the tough men in WCW to meet on pay-per-view, in a junkyard. It was Bash at the Beach 1999. And let me tell you, brother, this match sucks Sonny Siaki's ass. Ten or so random wrestlers with nothing else to do meet in a real junkyard. No planned spots, the wrestlers were all wearing street clothes so it's hard to even identify who you're watching, and it's so dark that you can barely see anything. A helicopter with a spotlight is used to try and shine a light on the whole situation. It's certainly different. According to Meltzer, this match cost $100,000 to produce, but Bischoff said it was more like $20,000. For 13 minutes, a bunch of wrestlers smashed together like morons. The match causes several legitimate injuries, probably because they were all wrestling in a real junkyard with no direction. Hardcore Hack was originally booked to win the match, but he turned up late and drunk to the production meeting. I'm shocked there was even a production meeting. You certainly couldn't tell. This match is a disgusting mess and it certainly belongs in a junkyard. What it all boils down to is it's essentially a cage match because the winner is the first one who escapes the junkyard. And that winner would be Fit Finley. A terrible start to the WCW Hardcore division. Why would anyone want to see more of this? Fit Finley is awarded a Hardcore Trophy, a title doesn't actually exist quite yet. The trophy is just a bunch of random rubbish all glued together. So straight away it feels like they're ripping off the WWF because their Hardcore title was a smashed up piece of junk. A huge brawl broke out and Jimmy Hart stole the trophy. Not sure why he'd won it. Just like the Junkyard match, it's just a giant mash of bodies smashing together. It's pointless and it doesn't establish anything. The Hardcore Trophy was still in the possession of Jimmy Hart and his first family who'd stolen it. They were using it to taunt Finley, Regal and Dave Taylor who were little friends. This was supposed to all be settled at the Road Wild 99 pay-per-view, but the match was pulled due to Finley suffering a serious injury at the hands of Brian Nobbs. This took place in a house show Hardcore match. Apparently he nearly lost his leg. The trophy was never seen again. I wonder where this piece of trash is nowadays. If that's not enough incentive to not continue with the division, I don't know what is. A terrible start. And it seems like management may have felt the same way, because for the next few months, hardcore matches just sort of randomly happened occasionally, but there was no defined division. A couple of months later, Vince Russo joined WCW. He was a fan of the hardcore division in the WWF, and he wanted to do the same on WCW programming. Vince Russo was also a big fan of Screaming Norman Smiley. The hardcore division kickstarted with Norman Smiley battling Jimmy Hart dressed in a suit of armour. I guess it was a funny spectacle and it got a good crowd reaction so I won't dump on it. The hardcore title itself made its debut on the Mayhem pay-per-view in November 1999. Brian Nobbs and Norman Smiley battled to be crowned the first ever hardcore champion. I have no problem with these men, but what I must take exception to is, why is Jimmy Hart so involved with the hardcore division? It feels like they're trying to make a joke out of it before it's even started. It's a pretty standard hardcore match, you aren't really going to see any crazy stunts from these two guys. Just like in the WWF hardcore matches, they go backstage and fight. Smiley's gimmick is he screams when he's hit with weapons and so far he gets a good crowd reaction. There's a pretty funny spot where Smiley and Nobbs fight in an elevator and the door closes as Jimmy Hart frantically presses the button to open the door. Imagine the hilarity if someone had called that lift away. Sadly the door opens again and the match continues. Hart accidentally hits his guy which allows Smiley to win and become the first hardcore champion. I am going to say that Smiley winning the belt is a good thing. It's likely the Russo saw a lot of Crash Holly in Norman Smiley, and he'd been really successful with the comedy hardcore stuff. I would mark them down for copying the WWF of Crash Holly, but this Norman Smiley reign was a few months before Crash Holly doing his antics in the hardcore division. I flipped over to Raw to double check, and Crash is still with his brother at this point. 
Smiley was very proud of his hardcore belt, but speaking of copying, it is a direct copy of the ECW title. Why such a blatant ripoff? Finley returned and beat the Hawk out of Smiley, which I think sets up our first proper feud for the belt. We'll have to wait for that match though, because Smiley keeps ducking Finley. Instead, we get Smiley in a bunch of comedy hardcore matches. Most notably, he wrestled women's wrestler Ronda Singh. He spent the whole match almost losing to her until he got a lucky Irish whip into a table. Yes, it is funny spots, but how can it ever be anything other than a joke at the rate it's going? I'm going to hold back judgment on this for a little bit in case it improves. Up next on pay-per-view for Smiley was Ming. Well, I can't see this being a comedy match. How the hell is Smiley going to win this one? Smiley is terrified of him, and rightfully so. I thought we might be in for a good one here. But it's just more of the same. Smiley gets his ass kicked all match, but then wins it with luck because Meng is beaten up by Nobbs and Finley. The feud with Finley continues as they have a tag team hardcore match, which ends with Smiley getting his head flushed down the slash zone. It's all entertaining, but we're yet to come close to anything that resembles a good match. Now Smiley would defend against the big Irish boss man, Fit Finley, a match several months in the making that should be hardcore champion versus the official hardcore champion, Norman Smiley. And it goes two minutes because Ming beats up Finley and Brian Nobbs. There are other hardcore matches happening which aren't for the belt, but they also suck. In fact, they're worse. For example, Bam Bam and Brian Nobbs have a match in which the crowd is completely blocking the entire match. You'd think this was ECW, but no, this is supposed to be a company of a big production value. Brian Nobbs versus Smiley in a hardcore match ends with Smiley getting hit by a car on a snow shovel. Brian Nobbs is now the hardcore champion, ending Smiley's reign at 51 days. Now, I think I've been patient enough so far. This is where I have to turn up the heat. The matches haven't been good, but at least Smiley was entertaining. They didn't take his run as far as they could have. They should have given him funnier ways of escaping matches and fluky wins. It is what it is. But now we have nasty Brian Nobbs who's not going to be entertaining or have good matches. My worries are confirmed straight away as Nobbs defend his title in a four-way on pay-per-view. Finley and Nobbs are doing this weird gimmick where Finley is his trainer, but they love each other. And they are both in an army or something but Nobbs secretly hates him. I have no idea what's going on. Nobbs decides to bribe someone to put Finley in a match with Lex Luger, and that man is a wild slap nuts appears. Double J, Jeff Jarrett. But Jarrett is a dick, and instead he puts the hardcore champion against Luger. Luger proceeds to break his wrist and completely destroy him. Slapnuts now forces Nobbs to defend his title whilst having a broken arm. He will defend it against Bam Bam Bigelow, in a two minute match. Oh, this is terrible. In three months, there hasn't been a single good match or even memorable moment. It's just completely mindless weapon shots and short matches. No thought is going into any of this. The only reason I'm not going to completely dump this title with Bird Turn is Bam Bam Bigelow could be the man to potentially do something better with the title. His first title defense is against the Demon in a 10 second match. Why are they still bothering? They've made so little effort. Bigelow vs The Wall produces the biggest spot we've seen so far in the hardcore division as Bam Bam flapjacks The Wall from the top and through a table. I wouldn't exactly call it memorable, but at this point I'd take anything. Brian Nobbs, who looks like a diseased pigeon, still wants his title back. And he has that chance at Super Brawl 2000. This is basically a handicap match because Finley and Nobbs are friends again. They are the broken arm boys. The match ends where Bigelow falls on his nutsack and he's punched with the cast. Do you see what I mean? There's just nothing interesting happening. It's not memorable. Admittedly, the hardcore spots in the WWE didn't always work out, but when they did, you remembered them. This is just a bunch of unlikable wrestlers smacking each other with weapons in the head until it randomly ends. No rhyme or reason. I've hated them all but Smiley. Oh yeah, and Brian Nobb is the champion again. That ends Bigelow's title reign at 13 days. Literally, on the next Nitro, Nobb was taunted into a 3-on-1 hardcore title match against Free Count. Now you'd think this would be a method to get Brian Nobbs over as an extreme tough guy, a fighting champion who can beat three men at once. And this isn't about me liking Nobbs or not, because I can't stand him. I just believe in booking a champion strongly. And yeah, I know Freak Out are far more athletic wrestlers, but they aren't the champions. Well, shove it, Hawk, because they win the match, and they're now the hardcore champion. All three of them. An eight-day title reign for Brian Nobb. I just don't understand why any of this is happening. The match ended as soon as I thought, well, this looks like it could be better than most matches. This belt is the most worthless belt of all time. It's meant to be a hardcore belt and instead you have a boy band as the champion. I shit you not, the best hardcore division match featured a man who believed he was a real dog throwing all members of Freak Out around. It was fun because there was actually some semblance of planned spots, athleticism and hardcore. 
And that's when this hardcore stuff works best. For me, that's why Jeff Hardy and RVD were so memorable as hardcore champions. But that immediately gets taken away because just 20 days later on the Uncensored pay-per-view, it's Brian Knob again doing a hardcore gauntlet against Free Count. Why are they persisting with this man? He's done nothing. The dog was far more entertaining. This gauntlet match featured probably the most memorable moment of the division so far as all three members of Free Count took turns hitting dives off the ladder. Shannon was the last man to dive, but he missed this swanton bomb off the ladder. Dude, I was watching WCW Uncensored the other day, man. And this dude, no longer my stoner friend. He stole my swanton ball finishing maneuver, man. But he missed it. Man, I'm going back to Carolina. And I'm gonna... Well, I don't know who I'm gonna tell about you, man. I never expected this to happen. Nobbs eliminates Evan Courageous with a powerbomb out of the ring through the table. He's about to eliminate the stoner friend when a dropkick from a free count member sort of knocks him through a table. A free is counted, but he grabs the rope. It's here that I learned that in the WCW hardcore division, rope breaks count. Who would have thought that? The match restarts and quickly ends with a middle rope trash can splash from Nobbs. He is now a three time hardcore champion, and I actually enjoyed that match, it was fun. Please tell me this isn't going to be the only good match of the division's entire existence. Who knows, maybe Brian Knob has now figured out how to do these matches. Well, I'll stop you right there, Hawk. The final match in the WCW Saturday Night TV show was a hardcore title on a pole match. I promise you I'm not making this up. It was great, bro. We had all of the greats of the WCW hardcore division. We had the hardcore wiggler Norman Smiley, bro. We've got the dog. We've got Brian Knob. Okay, maybe I overstated it, bro, but this hardcore title match on a pole was revolutionary. Nobbs wins it, but just five days later, the title is relinquished because Russo and Bischoff have reset WCW. You'd think it would be a good time to drop the title, but they don't. The match to crown a new hardcore champion will be at Spring Stampede. Terry Funk versus Norman Smiley, which starts in a toilet. How appropriate. We do get a memorable moment in this one as Terry Frank tries to crawl for a dish hatch and Norman sprays him down with a hose. Obviously it's just a comedy spot, but I think some thought actually went into it. Smiley ends up hanging from a pipe in a corridor like a bat until Funk hits him down with a chair and through a table. Again, this looked planned and it's more interesting than almost the entire hardcore division run so far. The rest of the match is boring and Terry Funk wins. I'm going to say this is good overall because potentially we could get some real hardcore matches now. I feel like I said the same thing about Bam Bam. And it's never exactly wise giving late WCW the benefit of the doubt. Well, it is certainly more hardcore. The very first defense starts with three unprotected chair shots from Terry Funk. But it is against the wall. And what is a wall made out of? A brick. So it's probably not that dangerous overall. Another highlight of this match is Terry Funk missing a moonsault to the outside of the ring. Also in the same match, a pile driver on the commentary desk, which doesn't break. The wall slams Funk's head into a cage time and time again. Then a pile of tables fall over both guys out of nowhere. Funk randomly wins with a weak little stomp on the table on top of the wall. Well, at least it's far more interesting in a car crash kind of way. Good. A handicap hardcore title match at Slambury also starts in the toilet. I swear I've seen more matches taking place in the toilet than the ring during this run. Smiley has a mystery man with him. That man turns out to be Ralphus. He was, of course, the man who was Jericho's personal security. But he had nothing to do at this point with Y2J and the WWE. It's another comedy match, except this one is just terrible. Then they have the exact same match on Nitro. In this one, a golf cart gets involved. Smiley is driving it and screaming whilst Funk hangs onto the back. Then they crash into a pile of crates. Okay, I have to admit that was pretty funny. Then they lose all credit because all three smack each other in the head time and time again with cooking trays. It just looks ridiculous. Terry Funk eventually smashes Ralphus about a million times who accidentally squashes his own partner on the ground. It's one of the worst matches I've ever seen. For some reason, this loss meant that Smiley and Ralphus both lost their jobs. They cry after the match. This is exactly how I'm feeling at this point. Meanwhile, the leader of the Grey Crew is putting pressure on Terry Funk to give up his hardcore title. He doesn't want any of the old guys to have a title. Bischoff even offers him money for it and Funk still refuses. Wow, an actual storyline for this division. Terry Funk was certainly a fighting champion, except none of the championship matches were ones you wanted to see happening. He beat all comers as Bischoff continued to put pressure on him to drop the belt. He was even forced to pull double duty one night. And yet another hardcore match that features Ralphus and Norman Smiley. Feels like this division is lost without this guy. After 36 days, Shane Douglas and the New Blood demanded Funk retired. Terry Funk stood strong and said he would never relinquish the belt, and he's actually just signed a new WCW contract. 
As a punishment, Funk is destroyed by the new blood whilst his daughter watches on. He's given multiple pile drivers onto a chair, and then Douglas makes a cover and Chris Candido counts a three. This is somehow an official title change. Could they not come up with a smarter way to do this? Somehow this division is still getting sillier. The franchise gives Smiley and Ralphus a shot at his title. They were both fired for losing their match earlier in this video, but this got them their jobs back. When it came to the match, it wasn't actually Ralphus, instead it was Terry Funk wearing a fat suit. No it's not, on closer inspection it's a gorilla suit. Funk wrestles the match the same way Ralphus would do, hiding in the corner and waiting for his chance. It's a standard WCW hardcore match just with loads of random weapon shots to the head. But instead, this one has a gorilla watching on. It's a bit of a weird spectacle. Eventually Douglas sends Smiley through the table and the gorilla springs into actions with fists wrapped in chains. Then he unmasks to reveal that it's Terry Funk and he is now the champion yet again. What a pointless one day title reign for Douglas that was. Why is everything in WCW so poorly planned? As Terry Funk and Vampiro have a match, Vampiro tries to set off fireworks in Funk's face. He screams hit my pyro and then looks annoyed when he realises that he's nowhere near the launch point. Also why does everything look so harmless? They go through tables multiple times in a match and act like it didn't even have the slightest impact. It feels like the table spots meant a lot more in the WWF. Vamp starts spraying him with lots of petrol for about a second before Sting makes a save. Everything is so poorly planned and rushed it loses its impact. Speaking of poorly planned, Chris Candido challenges for the hardcore title. They fight to the back as Terry Funk puts Candido in the back of a pickup truck and drives away. They drive to a farm. <laughs> There is a wrestling table randomly lying out in the open at this farm. Candido dunks Funk in a water bucket followed by a horse turd. They brawl into a stable. The horse is kicking its feet with anger and looking annoyed. And then it completely flips out when Funk does a pile driver next to it. The horse kicks Terry Funk. It ends when Candido climbs onto a stable but he's got rope tied around him and Funk pulls him for a table. Funk smashes the referee but then realises there's no one to count the pin. He looks around with confusion, I thought he was going to ask the horse to make the count. He tips a bucket of water over the ref to revive him and that's the free. Okay that is one of the craziest matches I've seen. This is what I'm talking about, memorable stuff. It wasn't necessarily a good match but it was really memorable. I'll never forget this match happened and you shouldn't either. My happiness soon comes to an end because on the next episode of Nitro it's Funk vs Eric Bischoff for the hardcore title. Of course Funk is beaten up by multiple members of the New Blood and now the leader of the Grey Crew is the hardcore champion. He's finally got the belt, he's been after it for months. Bischoff immediately gives the belt to the Mamelukes. It's not terrorised, we just hear about it happening. This isn't going to be good. The Mamelukes would also defend the belt under the Freebird rules, just like Freecount did, but they needn't have bothered. After just one big Vito title defence against Terry Funk where he crushed him with a pile driver through a table, Funk raised Vito's arm and it was like a passing the torch moment. Then they go and ruin it because Vito smacks him with the belt from behind. And over on Thunder, the Mamelukes are no longer Freebird champions, only Vito is the champion. This counts as a title change for some reason. Even though Vito was already a champion, they're just not Freebird champions anymore, I don't know. And whilst Vito would be a fighting champion, it would continue to be wacky stupid matches. At this point, the amount of hardcore title shots that Ralphus has had is ridiculous. How are we supposed to take it serious when this guy's a contender? Now Vito wasn't bad, and he might have had a chance of getting over as a tough talk in New Yorker, but he just wasn't involved with anyone noticeable enough. He would lose the belt to Lance Storm via tap out after 42 days. And believe it or not, that's the second longest title reign in this belt's history. This was a pretty big push for Lance Storm. He made sure all his matches were contested under Canadian hardcore rules. This meant no weapons. He renamed the belt the Sestatuan Hardcore International title, because I guess he felt those initials were what WCW thought of that belt. Storm now had three belts. He was the original belt collector. The matches were well wrestled, but it wasn't hardcore. After 21 days, no, Lance Storm gives the belt away to his Team Canada faction member Car Oulette. The belt now has been given away twice like an unwanted punch to the gut. Storm said he was the most hardcore man he knew. Let's hope that's true. Car Oulette loses the belt literally the same night. And the champion once again is Norman Smiley for some reason. Give me strength. But Norman doesn't even want to be the champion. He's trying to give the belt back. Please kill this thing now. No one wants it or cares. Why couldn't they take this seriously? There were so many hardcore wrestlers out there. Why not use them? I guess by the middle of 2000, most of the ECW guys that were in WCW had left. Yeah, they should have done this a year earlier. There's just no one good to be using. It seemed like no one wanted the belt. Smiley was being forced to hold the belt against his will. It was ruled he was not allowed to give the belt away. 
They even had an I quit match, but the gimmick here is that Norman Smiley has lost his voice and he couldn't say I quit, even though he wanted to lose the belt. But there's no way of losing it without a voice. His opponent started screaming at him, say I quit. And this meant Norman won the belt because the idiot said the words I quit. It's so wacky. WCW seemingly gave up on the division at this point as Smiley disappeared from TV. Beyond boring, Mike Sanders was now in a position of power in WCW and he vacated the belt and mandated a hardcore title tournament. So it's now been given away twice and vacated twice and it's not even been a year. This tournament isn't worth two turds either. It seems like the Wall has finally won the hardcore belt after he was beaten so many times in matches, but then Sanders reverses the decision and says that Reno is now the hardcore champion. The winner of the tournament is someone who lost. Great. Reno is a man who looks like a spud with a greasy gone off root growing out of it. With Reno as the new champion, the belt disappeared from the show for multiple weeks in a row. At Halloween Havoc 2000, we are told that we've reverted back to the normal hardcore rules. It had apparently been changed at some point where all the hardcore matches had to start in the back. This is literally the first time I've heard anyone mention it and I've watched every hardcore match so far. This rubbish carried on for 35 days. I was so happy when I saw Crowbar's angry face coming down the ramp. It's the best hardcore match we've seen in ages because Crowbar actually understands what to do. He comes up with special ways to use the weapons whilst also doing athletic stuff. The most underrated man in the dying days of WCW. Crowbar wins the belt and this cheered me up. With Crowbar as the champion, the match quality certainly picked up. Crowbar is for some reason a 70s guy, a follower of Mike Awesome, and he also has Daphne as a manager. She is the 70s goth. I guess this would be as good a time as any to address the Daphne situation which has been going on in my channel in the last month. I know I already made a video about Daphne's career and tragic ending, but it seems like some new evidence has come to light that is worth discussing. I know a lot of Daphne's friends and family watch my channel, and I didn't really want to open up any old wounds by making another video about her. I'd appreciate the squad letting me know if I should make another Daphne video in the comments section. I'm happy for any discussion to take place in this video's comment section, I do read your comments. I was ready to let it all rest, but there's been a lot of noise lately that I can no longer ignore. Anyway, back to the hardcore belt. The belt settled down and it was booked on a more consistent basis. Crowbar vs Funk at Starcade is a fun match. They fight in the back of a lorry with boxes falling on top of Funk. In return, he throws Crowbar at the lorry for a table. The Crowbar splash through the table isn't enough to finish off Funk, who ends up winning the hardcore belt after a pile driver on a car door. It was nothing incredible, it was just better than most of the hardcore matches we've seen. I actually had a little bit of fun watching it. It's like comparing your ex to your current girlfriend. Your ex is slightly better than your current trash bag hoe, but they're still both violent and even make you smile. Terry Funk is a three time champion. Don't get too excited, he'd lose it at the next pay per view 28 days later. And the man he would lose to is Meng. This is a three way dance also featuring Crowbar. Funny spot in this one is Crowbar and Funk working together to drop table after table on top of Meng. The match also features a Crowbar balcony dive for a table. The camera anger is terrible and it's poorly lit. Crowbar is slammed by Funk through a fence which also looks like it legit screws his ankle up. The bumps this man took in the dying days of WCW and it was all for nothing. It was actually a decent chaotic match which is won by the monster Meng with the death grip. We're almost done now which is a shame because Ming as the hardcore champion had a lot of potential. But it seems like everybody decided Ming was scary enough already and now he had weapons they just wanted nothing to do with him. Ming defended the title just once on Thunder in 2001. Then he signed with the WWE whilst he was still the hardcore champion and appeared at the Royal Rumble. The title was never seen again on WCW programming and never mentioned again. They would go out of business just a couple of months later. There was a thing about Ming giving the title to the Barbarian on an independent show in 2001, just after the Rumble. But that isn't an officially recognised title reign, besides Barbarian was out of WCW at that point. And along with that, it had already been given away twice at this point, it doesn't really need a third handout does it? Well thank god that's all over, I think you can all clearly see why I didn't turn this into an episode of was it any good. There clearly wasn't even a debate here, it wasn't good. When the most memorable moment of an entire run was Terry Funk getting kicked by a horse, you know you're in trouble. Smiley did okay too, well at least he was entertaining, but WCW just didn't have the hardcore talent to pull this belt off at this point. If it had been a year earlier it could have been different. In early 1999 they had a bunch of ECW guys, plus they had some real fighters like Flynn and Tank Abbott. But instead we had to make do of a bunch of boring hardcore matches with only a few interesting fought out spots through the entire run. Way too much Brian Nobbs in the early days of the belt too. The belt was handed around all the time and normally changed hands multiple times a month. Because it was so bad nobody wanted it, Lance Storm was right when you called the belt shit and if you don't agree with that I'll smack you where you sit. 